All right, welcome Kings and Queens. Today we are talking love and marriage Huntsville, but this commentary is going to be specific to the strategy of the executive producer, Carlos King. Love and marriage Huntsville. How this show has managed to go from first to worse. First to worse, from black excellence to love and marriage, Hoodville. From black and excellence to love and marriage, lockup. <laughs> from black excellence to love and marriage, criminals, you name it, I'll claim it, honey. We are talking about it today. Um, I want to give you a different perspective. I really gave it a lot of thought. I broke it down and I would like to share with you. Let's talk about it. For those of you who are just tuned in or if you're new to the channel, welcome to the palace. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television. But most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the black experience. Subscribe now. All right, y'all. I am going to jump in. The show is tanking. The show is tanking. It's been tanking. And I'm not saying this because of the ratings. I don't care if the ratings were higher than what we've ever seen. My opinion still and will remain the same. It's the quality of the cast. It's the quality of the storyline, which have become non-existent. The cast are giving burnt out. The cast are giving burnt out. You know, it's funny. They said that uh, on Bravo, there's a show that I've come to love. Vanderpump Rules. Over the course of the past two to three seasons, Vanderpump Rules became very, very toxic, very, very cannibal-like, because I feel like the cast on that show, which is an all-white cast, got to the point where they were willing to eat each other alive to be front and center, the leading lady, the leading man. And you can only go so far with a demonic-like spirit where you have this conquer and devour attitude or divide and conquer attitude, it wears you out. It's unsustainable. You cannot operate at that level for too long before you collapse. So it's being said that they are taking a break due to burnout of the Vanderpump cast. Um, due to the Vanderpump cast, like it's just been so toxic. Love and marriage Huntsville should have been and took a break. They should have been and took a break. The way they outline these episodes don't make sense. They run them back to back to back to back to back. They take, what, a 90-day break. They come back and listen. The cast is giving null and void. Your cast, they're burnt out. But more than that, I think the, the cast is a direct reflection of the executive producer. And that's why I have said, Carlos King, I believe that you have singly, single handle, I'm sorry, single handedly ruined your own show. The one that you used to brag about as being the number one show on the own network. And you have managed to take this show from first to worst. OK, now let me tell you something. The show is tanking because the producers, the producers are tanking, y'all. Carlos King has moved on. He's gone. He don't live here anymore. He's gone. He's checked out. And in my opinion, he checked out last season. And I think we are now just seeing the effect of that by way. Y'all are looking at the visual numbers. Don't look at the visual numbers. Look at the behaviors. Look at the behaviors. Look at the lackluster appearance of the cast member. Look at how they're just throwing any and everybody on the screen. It's done. It's a wrap. I'm just here for the countdown. Carlos, I feel like, has solidified his new talent in Houston. And in my opinion, he is now discarding this cast, this current cast of Love and Mary Tunsville. I feel like he's hit a wall. I feel like he don't give a damn. And I think he's taken his marbles and he has decided to go and play elsewhere. Shit. He's, he's out of there. So he don't really care about what's going on. He's on to the next thing. And I'm going to get a little bit deeper. I feel like when it comes to production, 
reality TV and cast, I believe Carlos has somewhat of a promiscuous attitude and a promiscuous appetite. He's chasing, in my opinion, a television high that cannot be replicated. Pause. It is no different than an addict that takes that first hit of that substance and they continue to do drugs and they're hooked. But you know what they're actually chasing or going after? That initial high, that feeling of euphoria. And I feel like that's what Carlos is doing. He is chasing that same high that he got when he came out the box swinging against Bravo. However, that cannot be replicated. Carlos King, you cannot replicate Bravo. The moments that you had on Love and Hip Hop, Atlanta, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, or anything else cannot be replicated. It's done. It's over. It's in the past. We can't move past the tired, boring storylines on Love and Mary Tunsville because the producer is stuck in his own growth. It's similar to writer's block. When I really thought about it, I said, you know what? This is kind of giving writer's block. Carlos has the inability to produce new work and he's creatively shut down. And when I say produce new work, I'm talking about what the Love and Marriage Huntsville cast. He's done. He's hit that wall, that creative wall. He's blocked. And I don't know if it's because he don't know where to go or if he doesn't want to go any further with this cast because the decision to move further with this cast would be, would force him to have to acknowledge his leading lady. So I believe he's jumped ship. I think he's given us the big F you. And I think he's given that cast the big F you. The only difference between them and me is I know it, they don't. He got these women out here showing their asses to be put on a roster when the door is closed. The door has been closed. He closed the door, I'm going to say about 18 months ago, maybe 24 months ago at the max. Go back and start tracing the steps when we start seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Listen, he did the same thing if you don't believe me, with Love and Marriage DC, okay? He he completely abandoned that crew. He went off the grid for 10 months. He didn't update them. He didn't pop his head in. He completely gave them the big F you too. And it's funny to me because he got Jamie Tyler dancing like blackface, trying to keep this show alive. Bruh, for what? I'll, you know what? I'll give that a whole different breakdown on another commentary, on another video. But um, now you know why. Now you know why he alienated that Love and Marriage DC crew. I don't care if y'all make up. I don't care if y'all uh, switch up cast. He's done. He's done. He's picked his new target, his new talent. He's off and running to the races, and it's with the Houston cast. What are y'all's thoughts? Follow me closely. I I, I really want to give you a vivid example of what I believe Carlos King is doing, honey. It's, you know what? Have you ever seen or have, have you ever heard someone who breaks up with you or breaks up with somebody else, but they never tell you or they never tell that person? Instead, what they do, um, they begin to distance themselves emotionally and physically from you so that they are able to connect with somebody else. And if you dare confront them, what they'll say is, I ain't called you in months. You couldn't tell. I ain't really up with you in months. I feel like Carlos King is doing the same thing. He's breaking up with his cast, but he don't have the fucking courage to go ahead and pull the plug on the shows. Instead, he's going to try to squeeze juice from a turnip and let them run around like little rats in the lab, like pick thinking that they have a chance of surviving. When he knows, and probably the network knows, it's closing time. Okay? It's closing time. It's similar to what Moses did to Destiny. 
He knew she wasn't the one for him. I ain't making that up. He said it himself. She wasn't the woman that I needed her to be, but he didn't say a word to her. Instead, what he did is he jumped into his situation with Sonny and he left a mess behind him in the aftermath. He left hurt feelings, resentment, irritation, anger, frustration, and he left it to the ladies to deal with. Cast members, mark my word. Carlos King has broke up with y'all's asses. You can be dumb if you want. Carlos King is off. He's on the next thing smoking, honey, and it's called Houston, Texas. It's called Houston, Texas. He ain't really fucking with love and marriage, Huntsville. He ain't fucking with love and marriage, D.C. Now, Ray Charles can see that. Ray Charles can see that. I believe that Carlos King is a sprinter. He's not a marathoner. He's quick out the blocks, but he, to me, he don't have the capacity nor the wherewithal to establish uh, sustainability in TV. And within his projects, he's quick. He's off to a really good start. But then I feel like he, uh, he taps out. And that's why we are experiencing what the fuck moments on the screen with this season of Love and Mary Tunsville. I Listen, episode three, I'm going to cover it. It was a what the fuck moment. It was not television worthy. It was boring. It was, I sped, listen, I fast forwarded through all of Stormy's scenes because you're not going to force her on me because you burnt out. Mm -mm, you're not going to do that to my mental health. <laughs> you're not going to do that to my mental health. What do y'all think? Do you feel like compared to the trailer that he released that love and Mira Tunsville this season has lived up to the hype that he came out and created with the trailer? I want to know your thoughts. Carlos King has placed narratives in front of us that do not flow with the scenes. Narratives that do not flow with the scenes. Folks are all over the place. And honey, it's because Carlos King has left the building. Like the Titanic, this ship is sinking and Carlos does not give not one damn. And when the lights go off and the curtains close, most of them, in particular, many of the women, okay, are going to look up and realize that the joke was on them for little to nothing when it comes to pay. Fame is a hell of a drug, and Carlos played them. He played them like pickleball, honey. He played them like pickleball. Particularly the female cast, I'm going to name them, Nell, Letitia, and Stormy. Nell, Letitia, and Stormy. Women who are starved for it, who are starved, in my opinion, for attention and fame and women who are willing to go the extra mile to get it at any means necessary, okay? So much so that it's been detrimental to all of their reputations. Nell, Letitia, and Stormy, willing to go the extra mile, get down and dirty, do unethical shit, cross friendship lines, bad business practicing, copy, pasting, stealing, frauding, scamming, privacy policy viol violations, you name it, I'll claim it. Throwing your family under the bus, talking about an ex-wife of a man whom you cheated with, the audacity, okay? Yes, to the detriment of their reputations, Carlos has moved on and he's gotten them to pussy pop on a headstand, honey, in hopes of becoming stars and or leading ladies. And it's not going to happen because like Nini says, the door is closed. The door is closed. Let me give you some examples. If you don't believe me, let me break it down for you real quick. Have a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. We dealing with examples. I want to create visuals for you. I want to take your mind back to the past, okay? Because this has become a never-ending story. Example number one. 
when I say these ladies were willing to go the extra mile, even to the detriment of their reputations. Example or exhibit number one, Letitia ruined her friendship with Melody. The second season of the show on Love and Marriage Huntsville after Carlos King publicly manipulated her. On the reunion, he shared with us openly that he went to her and told her that she was about to be without a job. Where's the manipulation? You came to me as a woman and not us as a fucking couple. You came to me and not us as a couple. He didn't go to them as a union and as a couple. He went to her as a woman. Psychologically, he separated them as a couple where he implied that Martha was good and she wasn't. And if she did not step it up, that she would be out of a job. I want you to see the manipulation in that. You see, Tiffany and Lewis left together. Marceau was willing to stay. So Letitia, Carlos knows, Carlos picks a particular caliber of women to get underneath his feet so that he can reign, kingdom reign, control over them as a puppet master. And he's managed to do that with all of them, with the exception of Melody Cherie. So when he goes to Letitia and he's praising how well her husband has done and how well her husband has kind of taken the ball and run with it. But you, dear Letitia, dear you, Letitia, if you don't step up, baby, your job is on the line. Now, imagine a wife being told that, okay, a stay-at-home wife. What do you think's going through her head? So she comes back, watch this. She comes back second season and she made her, she made it her will and testament to attack Melody for clout, to save her job. And she's never let up off the gas since then when it comes to Melody. She played the part so well when it comes to Melody that this lady actually strongly dislikes Melody in real life for no reason. No tangible examples outside of you have a dark soul. What does that mean? What does she do to you? Nothing. You created a narrative at the finger snap of the executive producer in order to save your job and like a fit and like a, 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 a pit bull, you decided that you were going to go for blood when it comes to Melody Sheree. That's example number one. Example number two, Nell Fletcher came out the blocks pretending to care for Melody in order to get her foot in the door. Hold on, Queen Sheba, what you mean? Let's back it up, shit. Let's let's back it up before Nell became a full-time cast member. You don't remember, go back and play the tapes when Melody and Martell sat in their backyard. Look at Nell sitting there pretending to care taken in, soaking up all the fucking business, only to be able to fast forward two, three years later, go on an interview and share everything she knows about them and say they are both of them drama, both of them drama. Girl, the violation of it all. How dare you? So Nell, that's the first example of Nell sitting there, roll the tape, pretending to care Okay, now this se- last season, she gets her foot in the door by feigning concern for Melody in order to create her own storyline and to secure her place on the show for the first season, only for that damn mask to fall the fuck off and reveal that Nell is no damn different. I don't know what's in the water for Huntsville, but I don't want none of it. As a matter of fact, every time I go, and visit Huntsville shit, I bring my own water. Because I don't want to drink none of that haterade. Okay? <laughs> none of that haterade. Because the venom that the women have for each other, the envy, the jealousy, the conniving, because I want what you got? Nah. Mm-mm. And that's exactly what Nell did. Nell is no different than the rest of them. In my opinion, Nell is heavily male-identified. She has not one ounce of empathy or concern for Melody. She couldn't feign it too long. The mask fell the fuck off this season, actually last season. But I second guess myself. 
I second guess myself. But one thing about an old dog, you can't teach them new tricks. Nell been hating. She showed up the same way with mess over and over. Martell said this, Martell says that, inviting Martell to her house, getting all up in their business. And the only thing we got from Nell about herself was that family dinner. Ever since then, we ain't got no more about our family because Lexi embarrassed the fuck out of you by telling her truth. So now you back on that Melody shit this season. Keep, are y'all following me? Because if you show your family, you risk you risk being exposed. Your son say he don't deal with you. You too much. Your niece came in saying she don't really deal with you. You too much. Your stepdaughter said, hmm, she don't F with you because you too much. So what you're doing, in my opinion, you focusing more on Melody and your storyline with Melody. Everybody fucking comes on this show and attaches themselves to Melody and Martell's life. So for those of you that keep saying, we don't want to hear nothing about them, tell the other cast members, because that's how they get paid, by keeping Melody and Martell in their mouths. In their mouths. Ain't nobody else got nothing else to offer that's noteworthy, that's television worthy, that could keep me from fast forwarding, because I can barely stomach the scenes. But let me, let me finish about Nell and then I'm going to go on to the third example. Okay. Nell never stated not one time in her interview that she called herself doing with Crystal XO. She never stated that she stands with and she supports Melody as a woman. She shitted all over domestic violence. She stood on her heel and she continued to double down that Martell should not, I repeat, Martell should not be held accountable for his actions. She implied jail is too much for Martell to have to go through because he is a black man and she does not play that when it comes to black men be, being locked up for their crimes. Because he is black and he has a penis and balls, he should not go to jail even for domestic violence, okay? She pretty much said F Melody, in my opinion, because if I were your friend or supposed to be your friend and I heard you talking like that on an interview, that's what I would be receiving in your message. Now, I'm more concerned about, um, she seems to be more concerned, I'm more concerned about her being, con more concerned about Martel being arrested. Now hush, please, because your slip is showing. It's continuing to show. It showed on episode three. And y'all, she is carrying this fucking ball to the goal line, to the finish line. She's going to try to score a touchdown with this one. Girl, what's going on in your marriage? What's going on with your son and the criminal justice system? If you are that passionate about black men being introduced to the criminal justice system, what are you doing to get your son help? What are you doing other than running your mouth about a grown ass man who can protect himself? Why are you always up in Martell's face without your husband? Why are you always in these passionate, heated ass discussions with Martell, communicating with Martell as a married fucking woman? Let me go on. Listen, folks can only pretend for so long and Nell didn't last a season before her mask fell off, okay? I believe Nell is for Nell. I've always believed that, but I had to sit back. And what got me out of that belief for a brief second is I really enjoyed their family dynamics and their family dinner. But Lexi didn't go along to get along, so we probably won't see any more of that production. Bring Lexi back. Bring Lexi back. You don't need Nell's permission. Okay? She want to do a funky two-step. She want to she wanna do a song and dance. And she want to pry in everybody's, everybody else's situation. Bring Lexi back. Bring Lexi's mom on the show. Bring Lexi's stepdad. Bring Lexi's children. Let's go. Shake some shit up a little bit. I bet you won't talk no more. That'll force you to focus on your own family business, your own dirty laundry. Let's go, production. Let's go. Give Lord, cut Lexi a check. Yeah. That's how you make, now, I'm just saying. 
If you're going to even the playing field, I'm just saying, come on. Cause you can't keep uh, bringing people on to talk about Melody and Martell shit. Even Trish is tied to Martell. Like we're tired of it. Everybody on this show cannot go. They now stormy tried, but it's boring as hell to talk about our family. We're not here for it. We're not here for it. Okay. Listen, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait because I'm on my shit today. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. I'll wait. I do not foresee Love and Mira Tunsville being on too much longer in the near future. So Stormy, Letitia, and Nell doing all of this for what? Destiny didn't let Carlos pimp her out for pennies by bringing her on the show to chase a married man on national TV. How fucking pathetic is that? You came on as a married woman and now you, you're done. You're coming back as a single woman chasing a married man, begging this man, right? For closure. Begging a married man for closure. Getting all up in your feelings about how he was supposed to have a baby with you named Justice. Girl. Girl. You've allowed Carlos King to snatch any dignity that you've had left. You supposed to come up in this motherfucker bossed up. And when they say, what are your thoughts on Melody? I don't have any. We covered that. I closed that chapter out. Well, can you come back on from Moses? No, I can come back on from me. Moses is now, girl, where is your gump? Your mm, about yourself. Okay, but okay. Right, listen, Carlos has snatched any dignity that you had left. He put you in front of Martel. He shot a scene with you with Martel pouring you a glass of wine. They play this funky ass, questionable ass music in the background. And then Martel openly insinuated mm -hmm, that he and you, Destiny, may have been intimate by commenting on how your son looks like him. And all you could do was laugh. Cause you know, had you rebuttaled, Martel would have handed your ass to you because if you slept with him in that moment, had you opened your mouth to pretend otherwise, that narc would have narc, narc, narked all over you. So you couldn't say shit, which leaves us to believe you have violated. And girl, what? Let me let me move. What girl code? Child, if this ain't rock bottom, I don't know what is. Let me move on. All right, I appreciate I I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up real quick. I'm gonna wrap it up real quick. The last point I want to make is some folks are having a strong reaction to Carlos King's announcement of his new show. Okay, they're having a very strong reaction. I was looking at the comments and they say, "Here he goes, ruining other black excellence. Here he goes, ruining other." Uh, uh, nice black families. And I think if I have to go back and I'm thinking about it, I said, could it be because Carlos King has a track record of breaking back black families and introducing them to toxicity after promising them stardom and fame? Okay. We heard it from Monique Samuels. We heard it from Winter. We witnessed it on Love and Marriage DC, how he broke up those couple friendships. And he placed the couples at odds. He placed the women at odds. And now the men are at odds, are at odds. Keep following me. Hell, you can go back and fact check me, roll the tapes. Let me say it again. He did it to Monique, Monique Samuels. He did it to Winter. We witnessed him do it single-handedly by breaking up the coupleship, the friendships amongst the couples and dividing them, the women first, the couple second, the men third, okay? And he tried to destroy Candy's reputation as a credible, successful public figure, okay? He sabotaged Nene and Cynthia's relationship by coercing Cynthia's den husband, y'all. Follow me, Peter Thomas in the background to attack Nini. Let's go for the gusto. Let's make 
television like they've never made it before. Let's disrupt Bravo's entire strategy and the history of the housewives because I am determined to make a name for myself as Carlos King. So you know what, Peter? Attack Nene. Attack Nene. And I'm going to make sure you get more camera time because I believe the men, the men are the real queens of the show. And as a gay man, if I can get you to attack, then I profit and I reign. I reign as the king of the throne. I'm going to outthink Andy. I'm going to out-philosophy Bravo. And I'm going to outshine NeNe Leakes. Because in the background, I am going to plot and plan to have her ass ambush because I want to snatch this bitch off her broom. The same thing that he did to Melody. Ain't nothing changed, baby. It's just a new zip code and a different show. But everywhere he goes, there he is. Okay? Now, he sabotaged Cynthia's and Peter's relationship because when he coached Peter to come after Nene, it caused issues in Peter's and Cynthia's marital home. You see the domino effect? The list goes on and on and on. But at the end of the day, the love and marriage Huntsville ship is sinking and Captain King has abandoned his crew. (laughs) 